most things in our world don't last very long, right. uh, clothing in particular. Uh, and I, I'm less critical of that than I would say you are in the book. I think most people like it for the same reason. I'll, I'll give you a version um, of the conversation I had with my son, who's a, who is a minimalist by name. Okay. I think it's... Uh, it's uh, it's. A, I'm not sure what the counterpart is to being a minimalist by name. You know, if you're not careful, minimalism is just an excuse to buy different stuff to carry your minimalist um, goods with and in. But he's something of a minimalist. Let's just leave it at that. And he was talking about how Apple AirPods wear out after about two years. The mm-hmm. battery can't be saved. It'll, it'll just not be rechargeable after about two years. And he was saying how horrible that is. And I thought, well, it's a little horrible. Uh, but it's also the fact that m- probably in two years, there's going to be a much better model coming along, and I would probably like to upgrade. So I'm probably going to want a cheaper version now that I know won't last very long. You might say, well, $150 isn't cheap, but I want a cheaper version now that won't last very long because I want to upgrade. And I think that's true of fashion a lot. We're very rich. It's, it's a sign of our wealth that much of the stuff that we have wears out. So we, it's not just that we'd like to get a good price. Mm-hmm. We'd like to get, have a, pay a good price because we want to reserve the right to get a better item in the near future. Well, I, I totally agree with you, and and I think what's been really remarkable over the last you know forty years in particular is is not just you know we our, our society say the United States has grown incredibly affluent over that period, but but at the same time China in particular, but East Asia in general has become incredibly proficient to manufacturing to certain price points. Oh, yeah. You know, and and I've had the experience. I reported in China and Chinese factories for many years, and and it was one of the most amazing things I ever encountered was going into an apparel factory. And I actually heard the apparel manager, the the factory manager, say, "Well, you like this design that was being made for an expensive brand in the U.S. Well, we can make this at your price point, same garment, you know, no problem." And I encountered that a few years later with suitcase designs, very nice suitcase for a well-known brand. And I was with a purchasing someone from an American purchasing firm, and they said, "We like that, but we can't pay that price for it." And they said, "No problem, we can make a few changes here and there. Won't be as durable, but we will be able to manufacture to that price point." So I think those are the two phenomena together have combined, you know, for better or for worse to to create this confluence of stuff that's piling up in our homes. And by the way, you said in passing that we've become so affluent over the last 40 years. I'm in a long-running argument with most of my profession because I think we have become quite affluent over the last 40 years, whereas it's become, I was going to say fashionable, it's not nice. It's become, many, many economists today believe that that only a small portion of the economy has has done well. As I was reading your book, I was wondering if there's some data one could get at uh, about waste, about garbage, about throwing stuff out that shows how widespread uh, that affluence is. The, the, the magnitude of these uh, uh, people throwing away and recycling things is so large, it's kind of hard to argue that it's just a small slice of the American economy. Right. Well, you know, I've been covering the waste and recycling trade for, you know, a good chunk of my professional life. And there's a few things that are axiomatic in in waste and recycling, and that is the more affluent a society is, the more it throws away. And, and I mean, the data is really clear on that. And it's, it's really no accident that, for example, China's waste and recycling numbers have just skyrocketed in recent years. And they're, they're not not to the per capita point of the United States yet, but they are sheer volume, the world's largest generator of waste right now. And, and that isn't just people at the very top in Beijing. I mean, it's, it's people across the income spectrum. 